Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be making a sand castle like this a simulation using Blender and Houdini. Uh, so the modeling and rendering is all done in Blender and then the simulation is in Houdini. Uh, I'm doing this just to show you how easy this workflow is if you are working with Houdini. Uh, this, something like this is probably impossible in Blender unless you're using some sort of add-on, uh, maybe like a uh, uh, fluid lab or something, but uh, with just bare bones blender i don't think you can do something like this and i know a lot of blender artists want to just stick to blender and use it for everything but sometimes that is simply impossible especially if you're trying to go pro in this industry you have to think of 3d art as a business even if you're just doing it as a hobby uh, because especially if eventually you want to turn this into a, a sustainable career it's like starting a business without a lot of money i know a lot of blender artists just use Blender because it's the only option available to them. They can't buy other applications because they are a subscription that is very, very expensive. And uh, even pirating also comes with its own issue. The idea is to kickstart your career uh, with Blender and start making some money. And uh, when you start making some money, you can invest in better software. And the great thing is that you never have to replace Blender completely. As you can see, uh, as I'm switching, as I'm using Houdini, I'm still using Blender actively because I know if I try to model this castle in Houdini, it would be a nightmare. Blender is simply better at that and uh, and also at a lot of other things uh, like sculpting, creating materials, shaders, and uh, maybe even rendering. Appli and even artists that use other applications like Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, they're not only relying on, on those applications. They're using multiple applications like, like uh, Substance Painter, substance, substance Designer. Thinking that you can compete while just using Blender, I think, is uh, just putting yourself at a disadvantage in this competitive industry anyway let's go back to let's jump into houdini so that we can talk about how i set up these grains but i'm working on a more detailed course that will involve all of my houdini lectures as step-by-step -step guides are uh, showing you everything uh, from start to finish so let's jump into houdini and uh, take a look at this okay so here we are in houdini and uh, you can see my setup we have the capybara animated and everything and uh, we have our sand castle this entire setup is basically driven by only these nodes ignore everything before that because it's just for preview and uh, exporting to blender and here i'm just setting up the collider so i imported the model it's quite big as you can see let me change to smooth shaded i uh, can see it's quite big uh, so i scaled it down and uh, then you can use the the vellum constraints grain just to show you how easy this is uh, you can just drag here a vellum uh, grains config node and uh, you can use this to turn this into points by just clicking on this node on this input here uh, the grains are too big so i can just increase uh, the subdivision or the particle si reduce the particle size to maybe 0 0.05 and uh, you can see the the smaller this this size the more defined our castle is going to be as you can see here but uh, just to keep the simulation running faster i'm just going to keep it at 0 0.002 now with that i can set up a vellum solver which is basically the brains of uh the the system uh the sim our simulation and uh, it's doing some calculations here now if i hit play uh, the greens will fall I can go to the solver here and I uh, just scroll down to ground to other ground and then you can see now I have grains uh, if it's too unstable you just have to select the solver and uh, increase the sub steps to something like three or four uh, even increasing it to two will make the simulation way more stable and uh, you can see now everything looks better and this is just to show you how simple Houdini is with just one two three four nodes we have everything set up and uh, if I wanted any other object to collide into this i can just add let's say a cube and uh, uh, this vellum grains has an input for collision so i can bring that in and i uh, just move this maybe even scale it down so this is our cube we have brought in as our, our, as our collider and i'm going to animate its position so which is going to be its center at frame one and at frame nine uh, for now i can disable the simulation for a bit so that i can easily animate this and I'm just going to move it into the simulation so that it's colliding with the grains keyframe that so we have something like this so i can just turn back the simulation and you can see that's how easy it is to set up things 
Uh, but uh, our simulation is a bit more complicated than that. If you want to go beyond that, uh, you can create glue constraints. If I enter this simulation, I have these inputs. Uh, so I can use something called a glue constraint, which will just tie up or connect these grains together so that they, they behave uh, like like actual sun. Uh, all I have to do is add a constraints. We also have constraints in Blender. If you have played around with rigid body simulations in Blender, uh, they also have constraints. Uh, so it's the same thing, but uh, Houdini is just more powerful. So I'm just going to connect this here. And uh, inside here, I'm just going to change the constraint type to glue. And uh, since, this, since we are dealing with points, I have to change this group type to points. And uh, the target geometry should also be points. I can go back to the castle simulation and uh, we should see that the castle is holding in place. Uh, if I bring uh, the collider I set up, which is the foot, uh, which should be, should be here. Playback. You can see how it's able to collide into the castle. Uh, but uh, Houdini also has something called clusters. Instead of just gluing everything into a single object, you can create cl clusters. So if you search for something like clusters, cluster points, it simply create clusters where things are going to be glued. So all points in this purple area are going to be glued together. This is going to be glued together. So I can go back to the solver and uh, just in, in my constraint, turn up turn on cluster attribute and it will make sure that those clusters are respected. I'll explain this more in my upcoming course. I'm also going to reduce the grain size, increase the grain size so that uh, this simulation run, runs faster. And uh, I'm also going to reduce uh, the constraint iterations to something like 20 uh, to speed up the simulation. And uh, just now let's see how this works. You can see how everything is uh, working together and uh, another thing you could do is go inside your constraints and just reduce uh, the stiffness which is basically the strength of the glue so right now it's really strong I can just put it to about 1000 and uh, now I should some of these points should break up okay I think it's still too strong oh it's not too strong it's just that uh, we also have to turn in, to turn on braking so that uh, we can break these constraints when a high force is. Yeah, so you can see how they are breaking. I can just go back in and uh, increase the threshold to something like three. Uh, that way, they only break apart when a large force is applied uh, to them, just like that. That's just to show you how easy everything is to set up here. And uh, in my version here, um. Let me see, here is our Verum grains. We, you can see our constraints. You can see our clusters. I uh, can see the solver and uh, the glue constraints. I'm also adding in some, some other things just to make sure that uh, uh, you can see in this simulation, the grains start falling down, uh, which is something I don't want to see. If you don't want that, you can use something like Pop Awaken and uh, uh, you also have a sleep setting you can turn on in the advanced uh, to make sure that these particles start off uh, inactive uh, so now you can see when i play they become active only when they are collided into uh, that's how we get that sort of animation and uh, that's how we ended up with uh, the grain simulation you see in the render yeah, so I'll leave you with this uh, montage of uh, what we have so far done in Houdini. And again, my course is going to be around Houdini for Blender artists, basically explaining Houdini in terms of Blender. And uh, we're going to be taking a deep dive in how I made some of these effects in Houdini, but uh, uh, just in a course format explaining everything. So that's something I'm working on. And 